and then with an interface now i'm an environmentalist and climate change activist um environmental activism to me is basically just trying to uh try and speak about environmental injustices that are happening in Kenya, Africa and the world and also trying to educate more people on the importance of speaking up and conserving the environment and I also run an organization of young people where I teach them on the importance of conservation these are people I pick from my online space uh people who have not gone to class to study the same just like me so I pick them and then I mentor them and educate them on the importance of conservation Right now, the society favors women more. I like to say that because I also fight for men's rights <laughs> as much as I believe in women empowerment. And um, when, when you get to the online space, you realize that uh, most uh, female climate activism will get that um, maybe attention and their voices can be heard really quick because we have that point of we need to empower the woman, we need to do this about the woman. I think that has changed a lot of things. Uh, because long time women were not heard. Okay, what I read in books, because if I say long time, it sounds like I'm really old. Mm -hmm. So um, it's also a disadvantage on the other side where there are some people who look down upon women in conservation. Uh, the same people who look down upon women generally online still look up, uh, down upon women in conservation, where they see women as uh, weak people, yet uh, according to scientists, uh, women are more likely to suffer climate change uh, effects more than, more than men. And so when we try and add our voices to climate crisis issues, you will always find people being uh, bashed uh, because, you know, that, that woman is just... Or maybe when you just get the... You, you do, you're working hard and you get your voice hard, they will always attach it to some other issues like favorism, they'll always look at it as favorism when clearly you worked hard. And yet, uh, on the other side, there's sti they still favorism as well. Yeah. Yeah, I've had online bullying in relation to my work and even outside uh, in something that's not related to activism. But I'd say in, related, uh, in relation to activism, I get that a lot on Facebook and you know I, I don't know but if it's my following or, or it's everywhere because people believe that women should not talk about politics. Myself I try to attach politics and conservation because right now climate change is attached to everything. There's climate change and gender, climate change and food production, climate change and politics. So sometimes when I try and talk about politics where you're trying to push leaders to also do something about our climate crisis, I'll always get comments, uh, a lot of them from men, not, not that I hate men, but uh, a lot of them from men saying that, you know, you're talking about politics because, you know the thing they say about women, when women talk about politics, it's always about being a flower girl. Uh, they will look at it as um, this girl is getting favors from so and so, or maybe some some maybe a political leader chooses to support my conservation work, and maybe they'll share it online. And people will always attach to that's a flower girl, that that one, you know, all those kind of discussions around it. Yeah, and I get that almost every day, but we're just used to it. that has shaped my my interaction online right now I'd say is that uh, way back before I experienced some really heavy bullying at an age that I wasn't ready for you know that time that it just comes and to me I felt like the online I don't know this can sound weird but when I got the online bullying it was so intense you wake up one day and just you know the way celebrities get to their get exposed and then you just open your comment section and they're coming in the comments are coming in really uh, fast that that was mine like and i was not even asking like i'm not a celebrity why are they coming this fast and people are busy me left right and center it's a story i don't want i don't want to talk about it but i can just talk about how how i was able to get through it and before the issue came online i was getting bullied behind the scenes so getting threats like you know we are going to send you mungiki you know we're going to do this to you and 
believe me you when they came out i was more safe than when i was getting the silence uh straight i don't know how how uh, possible that was but when i got the, a lot of um messages those comments and all that i was also getting calls from few people who were just telling me people who had already been in that position and men and women both so they were just telling me you know just come down don't tense don't do this so i kept changing my instagram account from public to private and then i'd come back and then i'd get a lot of requests then come back to to public again so to me that excitement of getting followers it's so weird uh made me relax like people are just coming to my page but every time i'd accept them they'd come with abuses but one thing that really helped me is that i i just chose to look at it as um it, it's a it's a it's a heal that will eventually pass and so i had to just keep calm and go to so it i could go to school and everybody's looking at me like hey is that Anita Sain? And I'd say, yes, it's me. So it got to a point I'd wear a t-shirt, uh, my branded t-shirt, so that someone wouldn't just struggle asking if that's me. Yeah, I have the t-shirt. If you ask so much, I just point it for you. Um, but I think that helped because nowadays I have... It also helped in managing my, my temper because before even that incident, of course, I'd always get those random messages of people hating on the comment section. It's normal. And I used to get angry and comment really um, with so much anger. But after that story and all those issues, nowadays <coughs> I'm so calm. I get a, I get a very tough maybe comment, and I'm just like it's okay, or I just laugh laugh about it, or I delete the comments. We need to fight for sp uh, for safe spaces online for women. Because, you know, we've always had these talks. We've always seen men talk about how they are complete with women, how women are running their families well, how women are just, um, you know, um, are trying to, to help the society. And I feel like we should just allow women to uh, be. The same way we're trying to say, you know, you respect a man online or even offline, it's the same thing we should try and also fight for um for for women because when you when you're trying to discourage people and you know even if today we just get out of the internet and leave the internet for men only it's going to be boring let's just uh, try and appreciate everybody and uh, and embrace uh, everyone so that way it will be easy for us to have um um how do i say have a safe space where women can even table their ideas because we've seen great ideas great innovations a great leadership in women so let's uh, appreciate because in one way or another we are all important in, we all play a role in the society and uh, women can also play a big role in making sure that we have a better place for everyone to live in so let's try and as women let's try and be on the forefront in this we can't be talking about trying to make ourselves uh, a better safe space for a safe space online for women and we are the first people to always try and trash people i mean if we want our men to look at it as an urgent issue then we have to lead by example and this is to also appreciate all men outside there who are trying to uh, to respect everybody to respect both men and women and this is also a shout out to all ladies who despite tr uh, trying to push for women empowerment don't look down upon men and don't uh, don't make men feel like they're also less uh, less important because we still need men anyway so like i said i advocate for women empowerment but uh, also not compromising the boy child